don't focus on the reaction and the speculation going on in all the news. Focus on what are the facts and wait for the facts. Okay. And when you talk about it, focus on those facts. We go into all of this speculation. We start spying. Hello and welcome to the Compete Show. I just want to thank you for joining us today and I'm so excited you're here. I want to see you as a woman thrive in your faith, your family, and your work. And today I'm so excited to have Doug Peak, my husband, join us. Hi, Doug. Uh, Hello, everybody. How are you? It's good to be on the show with my lovely and more than capable, highly intelligent wife. Yeah, he is putting a lot of deposits in right there. (laughs) She has made me the man I am today. Oh, yeah, even more. Bring it on, bring it on. I could just let you talk about me the whole time, I guess. Okay, well, this is for the ladies. Yes. What are we going to do today? This is for the ladies. So I want to see you as a woman thrive in your faith, your family, and your work. Mm -hmm. And what we focus on here is talking about the news of today and how it affects your world, the news and the Mm. world at large and how it affects your world. And as a matter of fact, today, Doug, that's what we're going to focus on are three crazy stories happening in our world today. And I'm really excited and a little nervous to see what you might say about them. Oh my goodness. I know. Right. So first of all, a couple of episodes ago, we talked about the worth of your work as a woman, Mm -hmm. right? And we talked about women. Well, for all of us, we have one life. We can spend it how we want it, but we only have one life. So we really want to make it worth it. Right, Doug. So today, the first story we're going to talk about is the inflation that we're seeing Mm. in our world. And I want to ask, Doug, to just kind of speak to this and why it's so important. Uh, First of all, the historical nature of it, but second of all, how it's affecting the average ordinary person like Doug and I, like all of us, right, in the world today as we deal with this crazy inflation. So Doug, could you just talk about it a little bit about what's going on with inflation? Sure. I I think one of the things that's happening today is that there is a general consensus among everybody that uh, things are definitely much more difficult economically. One of the things that's interesting is just recently a research uh, center did a poll that said 85% of people believe that America is on the wrong track economically. And what I find interesting about that is Americans rarely agree on anything. It's so diverse. (laughs) There's so many different ideologies that are prevalent in this diverse land. But to have that level of agreement is astounding. Right. And so one of the things that I think that brings this level of agreement is everybody is feeling the pressure and the pinch economically. When you go to buy eggs before you could buy a dozen eggs for like a buck 50 in the state area in which we live. Right. Now you go, you buy a thing of eggs. It's like three and a half, four bucks. Yeah. People realize that's just not a minor increase. You know, that's more than doubling of the price. Gasoline, for instance, uh, it used to be that for $40, you could fill the average size gas tank for your car. And if you're a woman who drives a lot, runs errands a lot, takes care of a lot of different things, you know, you you fill your tank 40 bucks, it lasts a week to two weeks. Now it costs over a hundred dollars to fill the exact same gas tank. That is a significant impact on a person. And I think because of that, we're asking ourselves what in the world is going on and what is happening is inflation and we have unprecedented levels of inflation meaning double digit and what they mean when they say double digit inflation what they mean is they say inflation is increasing at a percentage rate Mm -hmm. over the course of a month and if it increases more than 10 percent you're in what is known as double digit If you get up into the 20, 30% inflation rates, that's called hyperinflation. Thank goodness we're not there. We're not there yet. Now, why is that? Well, one of the Nobel Prize winning economists, one of the greatest uh, economists out, his name was Milton Friedman. He basically said that inflation is 100% created in Washington, D.C. by politicians and the Federal Reserve. Now, I believe that this is the case. Because what the Federal Reserve and what the politicians have done 
is they have increased the monetary flow of dollars, meaning they have pumped trillions of dollars into the economy. And what that does is that dilutes the buying power of all of the dollars that were in the economy prior to that. Right. I like how when they say, uh, and put it simply, you know, like you think about a dozen eggs. Well, yeah. it's, you know, there, there's a hundred dollars between people going for that dozen eggs, but then pumping money into the economy, suddenly you have a thousand dollars going for that dozen eggs. I mean, that's yeah, that, obviously that's, not happening, yeah, you but have that's kind of how you dollars can look at it. available to pursue the same goods. Right. So people will charge higher prices. But the other thing that is really important to understand is it's like, uh, I, I, I like to look at inflation in the monetary policy. I explain it this way. It's like lemonade, you know? So you order a lemonade and your lemonade comes, right? Right. And you go, Woo, that's tart. <laughs> that's a little too much. And so what do you do? All you ladies is you give it to your husband and you say, Hey, would you taste this? And you do it for a reason that he is unaware of. And that is you want him to take a gulp so and get can, rid of some yeah, of the So I lemonade. can add more water. So then, then once he does that, you take your glass back, right? And then you pour water in it. And what, why do you pour water in it? Because it dilutes it. So basically you have more volume, right? You have what you sipped, what your husband gulped, plus you've poured in from your water glass to dilute it. In essence, that's what inflation does is it dilutes the buying power, the potency of your dollar. And what that does is when you're on a fixed income, that means that you are getting a pay cut every single month. Okay. You're getting less money for the work that you're doing. Now you think, oh, it's my business's job or my company's job to make up that difference, but they're under the same uh, f dilution going on. And so they're not able to keep up either. So the only way to stop inflation, according to Milton, Fle uh, Milton Friedman is very simple. And that is, is that you have to first and foremost, cut government spending. You have to stop passing spending bills and you actually have to sp pass spending cut bills. Our Congress, I think in 250 years of history has never passed a cutting bill. You know, <laughs> it just never ever happens. And so the other thing that you have to do is you can't raise taxes because that stagnates the economy. Um, and so everything in Washington DC that they're doing right now, just from a basic economic standpoint is going to in increase inflation. So it's going to, uh, basically challenge you as a woman, uh, if you're a single mom or if you're married, it's going to challenge you because you're going to have to take the dollars that you have and you're going to have to stretch them. Right. And that pressure is not going to change. Right. And that pressure relates to stress. And that's yes. what we really want to focus on today. Two things. First of all, talking about the issues like Doug just did. So thank yes. you for that economics uh, class. I, I think that's good. You kind of brought it down to the just language. Yeah, that we all can understand and we can all talk about it. But that pressure that Doug was talking about mm -hmm. really relates to stress in our lives. And so the second thing we want to talk about with each issue is we want to talk about ways to alleviate the stress. The news of the world impacts your world. Yes. But how can you make meaningful changes in your world so that the stress is not too much pressure on you? And the two things we want to talk about are having a budget and having goals in relationship to your financial world. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first thing I want to talk about is a budget. So actually with inflation and everything going on, Doug and I are doing that this month for the first time in a long time. And what we're doing is we have a set budget, but what we're doing this month is we are writing down every penny we spend. Okay. okay and the wait, a second, wait a second. Ah, every I knew you were going to say that. Every penny. Okay. When we used to do this in the past, we've done this a number of times in the 33 years that we've been married. We've done it a number of times. And my wife always would write down every penny. To the penny. <laughs> to the penny. But this time, what did you say? 
I said, Doug, I'm living on the edge. I'm rounding to the nearest dollar. So as soon as I said to the nearest penny, I knew you were going to call me out on that. Oh, so, you're living like a I wild know, thing. I know. I can't believe I you said that. You make my heart As it sing. was coming out of my mouth, I thought, oh, don't say that. But, but let me start a, over. So we're we are writing down every, every dollar. Every dollar we're spending. And the reason yes. we're doing that is so that we can compare it to the budget we have. Mm-hmm. We can make adjustments to both the budget and to the spending. We'll see which one needs adjustment more the budget or the spending at the end of the month but we're doing that if you don't do that you get into trouble in an inflationary cycle right you can get in trouble really quick because you can't spend money like you were spending money correct yeah because the dollars as doug explained don't go as far so take some time write down what your spending is and with You know, online banking today, you can practically run off your whole spending for the month. Mm -hmm. Some of those uh, online banking platforms have ways you can just flow it into your budget. There's all sorts of tools out there, but whatever you do, take a look at your spending, adjust your budget, because that's going to keep you on track. The second thing is you want to look at your overall goals. Now, one Mm. thing I think is as a married couple, sometimes it's hard to get on the same page with goals. So the tip I want to give you is start with what you do agree on. Okay. Start with where you are on the same page. And then that's going to help you have that conversation about the areas that are harder to agree on how much you spend, whether it's eating out, whether it's vacation, whether it's, you know, tools, whether it's, you know, home decor, whatever it is, start with what you agree on and then use that momentum to have the discussion on what you don't agree on and what you aren't on the same page on. And to finish off this topic, I'm going to ask Doug if he has any more tips for married couples to stay on the same page and make goals together. Well, I think one of the things that married couples uh, uh, have to deal with is that they're going to have arguments. And a lot of times these arguments are over things about money. And in an inflationary cycle, what's going to happen is you're going to have more money problems. And the reason, a couple of reasons, one, one might be because you haven't uh, rebudgeted. You're going to get into uh, money problems more quickly without even knowing it. It's kind of like, oh my goodness, we're, we're off the reservation here and we don't even realize (laughs) it. Uh, It can happen really quickly because like your gas and fuel expenses just go up. And We've always bought gas. We've always bought at this rate and so forth. But now it's cutting into something else. And right. when it cuts into something else, you have to take it back. So what that does is that creates uh, fear. It creates stress. When women uh, begin to fear, uh, have fear, and they, it's because they feel insecure. They don't know if we're going to make it or if it's going to work out. And it plays to their insecurities. Or somebody's going to lose their job. And so they then address their husband to talk about it and it turns into a fight. And the reason why it turns into a fight is because men don't like disagreeing. (laughs) Now, this sounds really strange because, you okay, Pastor, what you said is an oxymoron. You said it turns into a fight because men don't like disagreeing. But it's really important. What happens is, is if you start off with, and this is why what you said is so important. If you start off with is, well, we don't see eye to eye on this, or this is a disagreement. What you're doing is in a man's mind, uh, in his subconscious, what you're doing is you're unsheathing the sword, right? And saying, okay, let's have a discussion. Well, whenever you unsheathe the sword to a guy, he unsheathes his sword, He's just responding to the way that you started. But when you, when you sit down side by side, you go, oh, we agree on this. 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 Then my encouragement to you as a woman who uh, you have a boyfriend or a fiance, or you've been married a long time is to use this approach as you agree first. And then you say, okay, how do we reconcile this? And what, by phrasing it that way, what you're doing is you are tying into his subconscious desire to solve problems and puzzles so and really, issues. So, so what you're saying is, it is really important how I approach you about yes. the conversation. hundred percent. Okay. That's good. That's good. And that's a good tip to end on. Yes. It depends on how I approach you. So what I want to do now is approach you on the next topic. And that is, this one is really timely because this happened this week and depending on when you're listening to this um, podcast it may not even be an issue but i wanted to bring up the whole 
issue of the raid on president ex-president trump's house this week and i feel like we are journeying into a controversial issue depending on what you think about it and i don't want to focus on the controversial part what i want to focus on is that something has happened that is unprecedented yes. and as of this point this is a couple of days later we don't know all the facts okay and what i find depending on what news you listen to there is all of this speculation and that can cause a lot of stress for us as people both for us individually not really knowing what's happening or what's going on or secondly when we talk with people and we have stressful conversations so i don't really want to delve into the ins and outs of the situation what i want to say is that we're focusing on the facts there was an unprecedented situation that happened in that the fbi went into an ex-president's house i mean that's just a fact right mm -hmm. beyond that is a lot of speculation and that can cause stress and so there's just two tips i want to give when these situations have and then i want to ask doug to just give a quick tip or two as well so my tips in this situation are weighted out okay don't focus on the reaction and the speculation going on in all the news focus on what are the facts and wait for the facts okay and when you talk about it focus on those facts we go into all this speculation we start spirally excuse me i can't say that word we start to spiral mentally and that causes stress too we can waste a lot of time being stressed out about what's going on in the world that we have no control over and one thing that doug has really helped me with is to focus my energy on what i can affect and what is within my control mm -hmm. okay and so i just want to encourage you as women not to spiral down and and feel like you're just totally stressed out about all these situations all right do what you can maybe you want to call your congressperson and make your opinion or your conviction known about it maybe um you want to watch some news about it to see what is actually known about a situation but don't spiral out don't spend time speculating when i do that doug actually tells me kim turn off the news it's not helpful to mm -hmm. you and that's really true sometimes okay because i can get in a situation and want to know what is going on i just want to know the truth okay whatever it is i want to know it but that's not always possible at the beginning of a situation and so i also want to ask doug doug do you have any tips about when these crazy things happen in our world well i think what happens is that the news cycle today is designed to create drama and at its core you have to understand is that drama doesn't happen unless you have a good versus evil right a righteousness versus a unrighteousness well, that's a good point. and so it won't get people to watch or engage just to get factual information, what they do is they try to present it in a way that there's always sides. Mm -hmm. And when we watch this and we consume it over time, it's not good or healthy for us, whether spiritually, emotionally, or mentally. And the reason why is because it's always trying to get you to take sides. And the problem with the media's representation is that nobody trusts the media to be forthcoming or objective anymore. Uh, all survey research shows this, is that the least trusted entity in the United States uh, is basically the mainstream media. And so the legacy media, nobody really trust it anymore right. this is a result of postmodern deconstructionism which only focuses on developing narratives and so why is that a critical important for you as a woman to thrive is because instead is that when you watch this stuff you have to take kim's admonition to be patient and try to get to the facts what are the facts and instead of asking yourself how does this information make me feel 
ask yourself, what does this information actually mean? Oh, that's a good point. Can you say that? That's a really good point. Can you instead say that of, again? Instead of asking, how does this information make me feel? Like sometimes you see that if let's say you're a person who's really pro Trump, which is fine. And you see this, well, this is a slap in the face. This is terrible, you know? Uh, or you might be a person who is very anti-Trump and you go, finally, we're going to get that scoundrel. And, <laughs> but see, those are emotional responses. Right. And so that's what the media wants to do, create drama and emotional responses so that you re-engage in it. Uh, and it's so that you can participate in what is called confirmation bias. In, e in economics, they talk about this all the time. In science, it's a huge deal, and that is the bias of the observer. And the whole entire point of science is to try to remove the bias of the observer. You see, you want to remove any influence so that you get just pure fact. Right. Now, when you are listening to the news or watching the news, instead of asking yourself, how does this make me feel? You should ask yourself, what does, the inf what does this information mean? What does it actually mean? And when you ask that question, what you're asking your, uh, is a deeper question, and that is, what is the state of the institutions. And I think the problem that this raid represents is that we don't have an equal application on the just uh, of the law, rule of law. We have lost that. And once our nation loses its commitment to the rule of law, if it is applied uh, in unequal ways, then what happens is our country will bifurcate and ultimately divide. Well, and I think that's a really good point is that what we can focus on as people is maybe trying to use our influence to get that equal application of the law. Correct. And if we as Americans, a lot of us stand up and say, call our congressmen, um, really advocate for that, maybe that will tip the scales to to bring and to make sure that uh, justice is applied equally. Well, and I think one of the biggest things that you can do as a woman who wants to thrive is that uh, you must be committed to rule of law. You must be committed to the equal application of whatever law is out there. That's called justice, all right? And that, that's called justice. And that's a really good point. Instead of um, totally like, I totally am going with this person or that person, right. it's more based on how our country was set up. And, and that's something that, like you say, we can advocate for, we can teach our children, right? We Correct. have so much influence with our children and it's important to say things to them and for them to see us um, operating in that manner yes. and not being tossed to and fro emotionally over every news um, cast that comes up or every new interview we see on TV. Or event or situation. Exactly. You want to try to insulate yourself through maturity. Very good. Very good. So those are just a couple tips about that. And I guess uh, to sum it up, Doug's telling us don't even watch the news. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. The last uh, topic we want to talk about is COVID. And the reason why is because honestly, I don't think COVID is ever going away. No. Right. And once COVID, let's say it even did go away, there would be something else that comes up. I mean, there's Correct. always going to be some of these health issues or something that affects us as people and, and has a widespread influence over how our society is operated. So I want to talk about that for a minute. We're coming up to the fall and a lot of times in the fall, we hear that, you know, COVID is going to reappear in a stronger way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true or not, obviously, but I do want to talk about that we as women do not want to make decisions or operate in a way to COVID or anything else out of fear. And actually Doug's already talked about operating out of fear, but I think with COVID it also um, really is, is important because we do want to look at the, the science, right? The facts. Okay. There's so much emotion surrounding COVID over the last two years, but we have more information now, a lot more information than we did two years ago. So I just want to encourage you to look at the facts that are out there, whatever comes our way this fall regarding fear. And I also just want to say, when we look at our leaders more and more, I'm looking at what they do more than what they say. Yes. Okay. Uh, if they give us a, a, a rule to follow, but they don't follow it. Honestly, I look at that person and I think you don't really believe in that rule. You don't really believe that that's true. So more and more, that's where I land on things. Okay. And that's how I 
make decisions, mm-hmm. all right? Be, uh, besides the stats and the facts that are out there, I really look at what leaders do even more than what they say. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes, but I wanted to uh, throw it to Doug to uh, see what he wanted to say about this too. Besides, don't operate out of fear and look at what leaders do more than what they say. Well, I think, you know, as you said, COVID is always going to be with us. And what's really interesting is when we first hear about it, we first know about it because we didn't understand it. Uh, but people were frightened about it, particularly our leaders and health officials. Uh, what ends up happening is it's it's impossible to not react with fear. And part of the reason why is because we've seen so many movies and Hollywood scripts <laughs> right. about, right. you know, some natural disaster or something that's going to kill everybody who hasn't read a Stephen King book, you know, um, the a horror book about some virus or something like that that destroys the world and destroys people. And so it's a it's a popular theme. It's a popular uh, uh, archetype in, in literature and movies and television shows. And so this happens. And so our natural reaction is, oh my goodness. And the reason why is because what we have is called pattern recognition. Okay. What a lot of people don't understand is that our brains are, are wired. Your brain is wired to have pattern recognition. And this really comes out in the issue of like, let's say, uh, racism and stuff like that. A lot of people call pattern recognition today in today's world as racist stuff. And this is basically how it works is let's say you're, uh, going to work and a a clown jumps out and robs you. Right. And then the next day you you're going to work and a clown jumps out and robs you. And then the next day you go to work, a clown jumps out and goes, what do you, boo, you know, you're like, you're recognizing you're gonna ro- a pattern Yeah, you're going to rob me. Yeah, you're going to rob me. And he's like, oh, no, I'm just here to invite you to the Shriner Circus. To scare circus. you by yeah. saying boo. <laughs> saying no, boo. Kidding. But see, what happens is that, is that you see a pattern developing and your brain subconsciously says out of protective nature to say, okay, avoid that situation or whatever. So we see all these movies, we read these books, we hear these TV shows and all this kind of stuff. And this happens. Yeah. Pattern recognition causes fear. And, you know, one thing I want to interject here is don't you think that we're starting to react like we see in the movies? You know, Mm -hmm. I I mean, we kind of take what we've seen in the movies and we we bring it into real life sometimes. Yeah. and, And so what happens is because of pattern recognition, it's really important, I think, to understand that when you have this tendency, the way you overcome being controlled by fear is you have to work on your faith. And what faith is, is it's a pattern of stability. It is a pattern of growing. It is a pattern of reaffirming where you place your faith, your trust in. And so exercising faith, doing specific faith things is critical to the entire, uh, pattern recognition that allows you to stay away from fear, even in the midst of COVID or any other new thing that's going to crop up. It could be when inflation destroys your budget. When you have a child or uh, having to face an accident or a tragedy, the more you invest in your fear, the more you develop your pattern recognition. More you invest in your faith. In your faith. Did I say fear? (laughs) Okay, thank you for correcting me. See, you make me a better man. Ah. Um, The more you have a pattern of faith, your pattern recognition is not of fear, it's of faith. That's really good. Kind of like you're, we're getting in shape. I mean, we're getting our faith in shape. That's really good. So we only have a couple of minutes left. And so I just wanted to ask Doug uh, to take a minute. He's preaching a sermon series right now called Don't Freak Out uh, based on First Peter. And I feel like all of these topics going on, all these situations in our world right now are are really um, relevant to that, right? We, it's easy to freak out sometimes depending on what we say. Mm-hmm. So Doug, can you just take a minute and then I'll close this out, but can you take a minute and just talk about, um, how we can not freak out? And I think it really kind of falls with what you were just saying. Well, it's a study of first Peter, uh, all five chapters. Uh, Peter wrote this, Peter, the apostle wrote this letter to the church during the first major persecution that the church faced. And that uh, was the Neronian persecution. Nero was the emperor of Rome. 
he started a fire in Rome to burn out a little tiny burrow, a little hovel he wanted to get rid of so that he'd come in and take it over and rebuild it. Well, this fire got way out of hand, burned a third of Rome, and it touched two thirds of Rome. People were extremely angry, and so he blamed the Christians. And this was the first physical, um, economic persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire, empire wide. And so he writes a letter to them after it starts, basically saying, this is crazy. There's so much chaos going on right now. You have no idea what tomorrow's gonna hold, but don't freak out, okay? Don't allow the chaos to drive you. Allow your identity of who you are in Jesus Christ, that you know who you are, you know how to face these challenges, and even though you don't know the outcome, you know that you can trust the heart of God. Because in the end, Jesus has a heart for you, a passion for you, and he has a path to victory here. We don't know what it looks like, but it will happen. Well, and I think that's really good. And and that, along with everything we talked about regarding these situations, are principles for life, right? Principles for life. They apply to any situation. So we pulled out a couple of uh, specific things going on, but these principles apply no matter what. And that's what I love about um, God and about faith is mm-hmm. that it is unchanging. And that's what I love about the principles that kind of follow from following him. And I want to thank you for listening today or watching today. Again, we just want to see you thrive in life, regardless of what is going on. I want to see you thrive in your faith, your family, and your work, in your life overall. I want to thank you for watching. I want to ask you to subscribe, and I want to ask you to um, visit again when we have another episode, and have a great day. Thanks for watching The Kim Peak Show. Thanks for having me. Thanks.